Hey, what's happening? It's Quinn David Furness. This is the Beam Tom Podcast, Sunday, November 4th. What's going on? How is everyone? What's been happening? Happy fall. We're finally into the 50 degrees, getting some wind, getting some rain. The leaves are a beautiful combination of orange, red, and yellow. Always a good time to be had. This is me. This is Quinn David Furness coming to you live from 817 St. Paul Street. It's the Beantown Podcast, the People's Podcast, and one of Baltimore City's top 500 podcasts as voted by you, the fans. Well, first things first. Listener discretion is advised when you are listening to the Beantown Podcast. Number one, it is objectively terrible, and today it's going to be objectively sad. This is going to be uh, maybe a rough episode, certainly a candid one. Uh, number two, the uh, podcast, uh, I, I mix that up. We we use some language here and there. You know, you get the gist. We've been doing this for 10 months now. I don't think I have to explain everything to everyone. So... You're probably thinking, because I, I assume, you know, when you listen to the Bean Tom podcast, you don't just listen to an episode by itself. You probably listen to all the ones leading up before it. So if you're on about hour 26 now of our anthology, you know from last week that we anticipated coming to you live from the Appalachian Mountains this weekend. Why? Because we are going to be traveling there with the lady who I've been dating for the past several months. And uh, you might notice that we're not in the mountains and that there is no lady involved on the podcast. So PSA to anyone listening, hoping to get their weekly chuckles in. Uh, this, this episode probably won't have very many uh, chuckles for you. It's been a, a tough go of things. Uh, for a lot of different things, I think we'll probably focus most of our attention on, on the breakup for the next several minutes, but I am, I'm pretty sure I have strep, you know, they say if you can, you know, shine a flashlight back in there and you see the white stuff all over your tonsils, then that's the, the telltale sign. Also for me, like I get sore throats always before I have my colds, but I just had I cold back when uh, we were on fall tour um, right after the, uh, what, where were we, right after the Bowling Green episode, he got sick. Uh, no, right after the the uh, Rockford episode with Matthew. You remember that because I was sick on the podcast. That was fun. The concert sucked. <laughs> um, but I, I've had this sore throat for probably four or five days now, and usually the sore throat is two days, then it goes away, and then I get the cold. Well, this sore throat is just sticking around, so it's probably strep. I need to go uh, try to get into the doctor sometime this week, get some antibiotics. But it's just not fun. It hurts to talk, hurts to swallow, trouble sleeping. You can just feel how inflamed it is uh, in the throat. So that's that's just kind of a bummer. You know, it's not a major thing, but just kind of a pain in the butt. And then uh, some other things happening. Here and there, uh, since getting back to Bean Town, that have been tough to deal with. And then, uh, yeah, so on top of all of that, on let's see, Wednesday was Halloween. And you talk about Halloween being super spooky for the ghouls and the goblins and the, the tricks or the treats. Um, my Halloween ended up being a lot spookier than that because uh, my girlfriend, who I'd been seeing for a couple of months, uh, broke it off with me. And there's a lot here, uh, some of it just frustration, some of it sadness, some of it we're going to get a little uh, Seinfeldian with regarding some etiquette. But it was... Uh, the first thing to know is that it is one of those breakups that came completely out of the blue and one of those things I don't I still don't really understand. So I had gotten back from tour on uh, last oh, 10 days ago, last Friday, and we'd spent lots of time together and everything was 
going great. Uh, we did her birthday party, um, you know, big house party with all her friends at her apartment, you know, cooking and getting the apartment ready and all that stuff. And, um, you know, she went wild and I'm, I'm at an age now where I, I can't, you know, stay up till 2 a.m. partying like I might have used to, been able to in college perhaps. But so they all did that uh, while I, you know, ducked out early and went to bed, but everything was good. And we even hung out, you know, early this week. Uh, and of course, we had reservations to go to. I believe the site was in uh, Virginia, but we had rented a, an Airbnb. It was a cabin. And, um, yeah, it was going to be really fun getting away for the weekend, getting to spend some time with each other because I had been traveling seven and a half out of the last eight weeks. So I was really looking forward to that. And uh, let's see, Wednesday afternoon at work, uh, get a phone call. And basically the message was... Uh, I'm trying to think exactly what it was. I think one of the points was moving too fast, which was strange to me because I'd been away for so long, so I'm not quite sure. Maybe she had the wrong guy. I don't know. But moving too fast, and she felt really empty inside, and like she couldn't be the girlfriend she wanted me to be. So she said, well, we need to slow it down. And I said, well, I've been slowed down before. Look, this isn't my first rodeo. So do you want to slow down or do you just want to stop? And, of course, you give some of that opening, which I'm glad he did because I would much rather be stopped than slowed down. Uh, it's over. So my first, my the very first thing that went into my head, which I think just shows where my mind is operating 75% of the time, is that you can't, and I, I, this isn't like me being super, this is me being super sad, this is just me, like, basically curb your enthusiasm. You can't date somebody for three months and break up with them on the phone. Okay, breakup etiquette. There have been documented Seinfeld episodes on this, but allow me to add to the anthology. You can't go through with the phone breakup. you got to at least give somebody a lunch date, or the afternoon in the park, the walking date, at least I could handle the walking date. But you can't go three months where everything is, and this this was a, it, it, from my perspective, a very uh, good, very solid relationship. And that had been acknowledged by uh, both parties. Communication was great. Uh, physical stuff was great. Just really enjoyed each other's company. And then just Boom face hits the wall and uh you can't I don't know not that I I don't think I'd feel any better about the situation if I had been broken up with in person but just you know PSA for anybody out there so let's let's talk about this a little bit how long before you can't do the phone breakup anymore I think everyone who's listening here can agree that you can't do the you can't do three months and then have the phone call break up unless it's always been long distance and like I'm in Beantown and she's in Dubai or something, then I get the phone call break up because those plane tickets, especially around the holidays, are gonna run you, you know, a thousand, twelve hundred bucks. But but when you live two miles away from each other, the uh, phone call for the breakup just seems a little I don't even know what the right word is because I'm not like butt hurt over the fact that I got dumped on the phone. It's just like that's not a thing. Like you can't do that. So I think I don't know because what's the hierarchy here? Are we thinking ghosting, then text message, then phone message, then in person? I think that's a pretty fair uh, hierarchy. So I think I for me, ghosting is never – on my radar if you're in a committed relationship. So look, we've all had, you know, Tinder dates where you might go out once and you just weren't feeling it. So either just nothing happens after that or you send a message saying I had a really good time and that's it. Like and I don't think anyone feels upset about that. <clears throat> now, if you get ghosted 
when you're in like an actual relationship. So that's not cool. And I don't think that should be ever on the table. So let's move it to the text message. I think if you've gone on, you know, anywhere from like one to three dates, I think a text message is okay. Because I think three dates, for me at least, is plenty long enough to get a feel for somebody to see if like this is actually something or if you need to uh, pursue greener pastures. The phone call, I think... It I don't know. For me, and maybe I'm old-fashioned, but the, the statute of limitations on the phone call doesn't extend much further. I think one to, like, maybe five dates is okay. Because, look, if you've gone on a sixth date with somebody, we're already talking about a period of probably three weeks on average. That's almost a month of you guys going out. That's pretty significant. That's a lot of FaceTime. They're gonna, there's going to have been some uh, emotional bonds that have been forged so I don't think I I think five dates and this is pretty arbitrary because I'm just doing this off the top of my head is I think phone call but after five dates or let's say one month of you guys going out like come on you the phone call is not on the table anymore and it's not like the, the this is the probably thing that bugged me the most there wasn't anything leading up to this, you know, I did my research afterwards because I haven't, I haven't been broken up with in a very long time. So I just, these aren't emotions that I've experienced in a while. So I researched, you know, what are the telltale signs that your partner is going to break up with you? And none of them were, were matching. Uh, yeah, I just don't have any sort of, that's, that's the toughest thing for me is there's just nothing that I was going to say, Hey, warning sign here. So I apologize to uh, everyone listening. I was really excited for this episode because we were going to be, you know, in a in a new state from which we had never podcasted before, and we we're going to potentially get the lovely lady on the podcast for the first time, which would have been a fun dynamic because we always have fun. <laughs> it's funny to say now. Always had fun when we were together. And I think that would have really come through on the podcast. But, alas, we are sitting alone in the apartment and by myself. So, a little bit different dynamic. It also means that I didn't really prepare anything because I wasn't anticipating having to prepare something. And so now we're just now we're just doing the Straight Talk Express, right? Like the John McCain 2008 uh, presidential campaign coming to you straight from the heart. None of this has been written. Uh, none of this was really prepared ahead of time. And you might think, well, Quinn, this happened on Wednesday. It's now Sunday. You had three or four days. It's just between some of the other struggles that I'm going through and this happening out of nowhere, really a blindside hit. And then the strep throat is just kind of really bugging me as well. It's been really difficult to focus and, you know, I even, I even have work that I need to do this, uh, this weekend to prepare for this week coming up. And it's just been really tough to do that as well. So going through a a tough time, I don't, I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist, so I can't diagnose myself with probably a mild depressive episode. I don't know if that's something you can get if you're not already clinically depressed, but it's kind of how we're feeling. Now, there is a, there is a great, you know, multi-minute stand-up bit that can be born out of getting broken up with on Halloween. Uh, And I, I didn't actively spend a ton of time trying to think about it just because I've been uh, feeling a little down, but there are some, there are some good things there. I don't know if you want to call them silver linings, but Look, you get broken up with on Halloween. You already got a whole lot of candy, so you don't have to worry about going out to the store, to the Target or the CVS to load up on the fun size Snickers because you can already just drown your sorrows in chocolate and you don't even have to do anything. It's already right there in front of you. You were going to drown yourself in chocolate regardless. Just You can just throw that sad emotion in there and you hardly notice it's there. The other thing is that you can go get completely wasted and it's socially acceptable even on Wednesday night because it's Halloween. And I will say that 
I didn't get extremely wasted. I had two beers on Wednesday night with a friend, and that's far from sloshed. But, you know, got a little buzz going. It was nice. Oh, one other thing that's made this week hella difficult, and I hate the fact that I just use the word hella, is that getting back off of tour, stopped eating like shit. Apologies for my language, which means diet time. Because I do, I need to lose some pounds here. So it's been a lot of cauliflower rice and lentils and kale and flax this week trying to get back on the wagon and get back into running and all that stuff and a healthy lifestyle uh picked like the perfect week to to start dieting and i i haven't been amazing with the diet this week but actually all things considered and the way that this week was just the week from hell it's been okay there's only been one or two lapses two or three maybe <laughs> <laughs> and uh, overall i i feel i feel okay about it and uh you know hopefully it will get easier although as it gets colder i i don't know usually for me it gets tougher to diet when it gets colder because that's when i really am craving the carbs but it's been okay we spent we spent too much time last week on the podcast talking about the diet so it's been well documented but it's yeah a lot coming to you at once but getting broken up with on halloween i all I could think of was the episode in season one, is it, of, I believe season one, or maybe season two, I don't recall, of The Office, the American version, <laughs> when Michael has to fire somebody by the end of the month, and of course it's October 31st, and it, initially he wants to fire, I think, Stanley, <laughs> and so he tells Dwight to go do it, and that doesn't work, and then he tries to fire Creed, and Creed convinces michael to fire devin and then michael fires devin and that's the last you ever really see a devin but that's all i could think of uh the parallels getting fired on halloween which i didn't think that would be the real kicker as if i got fired from my job in the next week although uh i don't think that's going to happen the fingers crossed knock on wood all the good stuff so it's been rough got some coffee here i fucking love dunking man i think the biggest there there are there are a couple things that are really tough one is just there were some things coming up that i was really looking forward to doing together so like of course we were going to spend this weekend together in the appalachian mountains which I already talked about but also you know we weren't going to spend thanksgiving proper together but my brother is coming back to baltimore for that weekend after Thanksgiving. Jack, podcast legend, you know him, sang Wonderwall, played cribbage together. Maybe we'll do that again, except now we have two mics, so you'll actually be able to hear us. It'll be great. He's coming to to uh, to, to the to, uh, St. Paul Street, <coughs> pardon me, after Thanksgiving for two days, and I was looking forward to, you know, introducing him to uh, to the lady and, you know, hanging out and just you know, having a good time, three adults, but that's off the table now, and then I think a really tough thing, and something that I don't feel resentment towards, again, it's just sadness, I don't, I don't have very strong, like, anger or resentment emotions, but I do have pretty strong sadness ones, or just depressed slash empty ones, I semi-modeled my holiday travel schedule around being able to get back here in order to hang out with her on Christmas. So I'm going to Texas and we'll surely have our Christmas. Well, there, okay. There are some Chris, there's one specific Christmas special that's going to happen on Christmas day, particularly now, um, that I'm not going to announce yet because I haven't fully formulated the idea in my head, but we will be having a pre-Christmas special from Texas, which is where my family is uh, congregating. But I am getting back to the East Coast on Christmas Eve, the night of Christmas Eve. Twas the night before Christmas, if you will. And we 
had planned to hang out at her family's house on Christmas Day. Excuse me. And so I was excited. I was like, okay, I'm going to get to spend time with my family, then go get to spend time with her and her family on actual Christmas. Like, this is going to work out great. Well, now I'm flying to the East Coast on Christmas Eve. The rest of my family is flying to the West Coast on Christmas Eve. And guess which one of those is going to be home alone on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, no pun intended. So... It's going to be, you know, maybe when we get there, maybe it'll be the greatest thing of all time. Probably not, although I do have something in the works for a Beantown Unplugged special that day. So look out for that. But long story short, instead of the sweaters and the stockings and the fireplace and the hugs and the presents and all that stuff, what what you're listening to right now me si- me sitting alone in my apartment drinking coffee and bitching about my life that's pretty much what christmas day is going to be like and uh for anyone out there who's like oh maybe we should invite quinn to our family thing don't worry about it i wouldn't be much fun to have around and i've got some artistic creative things as they pertain to the podcast that are going to be happening on that day. So it's sad for now trying to keep an optimistic look on it. So that's one thing that was really uh, kind of frustrating and has me downtrodden. There was, there was another point that I wanted to make about it, the whole experience and maybe it will come back to me, but yeah, just for now, Lots of sadness. It has been a a tough couple of days. Just, yeah. So, I'll be okay. But, you know, for now. I think there's a, there's not a mourning slash grieving period. Those are, those words are too strong. But just, okay, it's going to take a week. Hopefully no longer than a couple of weeks to, uh, to kind of just emotionally, feel balanced and back to normal i do remember the other thing i was going to say so i have and maybe maybe this is true of you all the listeners maybe it's not maybe it's just something that's unique to me and is a unique character flaw but i tend to get into the mode where so just inherently i'm not the type of person who's always texting someone always communicating with other people always you know having a snapchat chain going that's just not who i am because i'm much happier just, you know, occasionally I check in on friends through text message or phone calls and, and all that stuff is good. But, you know, I think everybody, you know, lead lead your own lives, connect with the people you, you want to connect with when it becomes relevant. But, you know, I, I don't have the energy nor like the, the time or the emotions to always have, you know, a bunch of different text messages going with friends. So what that means is that, when I do have somebody who's in my life as I, the lady I was dating was come into your life and they're like your go-to person and that they become, it's not like an obsessive thing and it's not even that you're spending too much time on them. It's just they're your primary person that you're texting or that you're calling after a rough day or you got a silly, you know, photo Snapchat thing going with that's just like, and it's not it's not neglecting other people in my life because I'm not changing the amount of time I was uh, giving to them. It's not like I was canceling on a bunch of plans with other friends so I could spend more time with just this one person. That's not what it's like. But when you lose that, you go from feeling kind of, you know, that's kind of your emotional support. It's a constant in life. I'm the type of person who likes my routine, so I like knowing where the emotional support is coming from and knowing where the laughs are coming from and knowing where those uh, just amazing, candid conversations are going to be coming from. And when that leaves you, when that ceases to exist, in the, and when, when it happens in the way it did for me, where literally at 4 p.m. on Wednesday everything was great and I felt great about pretty great about my life in general and then you know 
literally minutes later that happened and then throughout the rest of the week some other personal things happening you know having strep throat and then being grumpy because I'm on my diet and not having that emotional uh, support not having that rock that you are used to kind of leaning on relying on just being able to talk through your stuff with and there's been plenty of stuff before this even happened uh, not related to the relationship but to some of my own personalized stuff that is and it's just completely swept away in an instant not even like can we get together can we talk through this tell me how you're feeling just like literally a 90 second phone call that's something I didn't even mention earlier this phone call was it wasn't even like let's talk through this let's talk how we're how through through how we're feeling for five to ten minutes it's this isn't happening it's over click that is tough that's really tough and so that's when you become that it turns into a dangerous time when you might slip into really you know really bad eating or severe drinking or just like not being able to get out of bed and neglecting work which is a whole other story so I've been pretty pretty proud of myself for balancing the the emptiness and the depression and the sadness that I've been feeling and just the sickness in my stupid throat the past couple of days with knowing that in order for my life to continue to have some sort of semblance, some sort of purpose, I need to keep going and keep doing well the things that I have control over and understanding that it's it's going to get better eventually it's just it just blows right now man it really sucks so that's sort of what's been going on uh if you have any condolences or if you're just wondering dude what the hell is with this podcast it's like the most depressing thing i listen to all week you can always Always send your emails to beantownpodcast at yahoo.com. That's beantown, B-E-A-N-T-O-W-N podcast at yahoo.com. You can always tweet at us. We are at beantowncast. We're on Facebook. One of the year two projects is potentially looking into getting an Instagram page since that is seeming like it's becoming a pretty big thing. I manage... The the Instagram page for my position, my professional position, and it's been a, it's been a big learning experience, but it's been lots of fun as well and lots of hard work. So maybe that translates to to the Bean Tom Podcast Instagram page. That's one of the year two projects we're going to be going through uh, the entire list of year two ideas, visions, goals, projects um, in a later episode because I don't have the full list yet. But you can always. Uh, Soon you'll be able to find us on Instagram. If you're listening, maybe you're coming to us from YouTube. Maybe you're coming from SoundCloud, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Play, Stitcher, Player FM, everywhere where your podcasts are and nowhere where your podcasts aren't. So regardless of where you're listening, go ahead, throw us a like button, uh, share it, comment, subscribe, rate us. On iTunes, I believe we're still at 40 stars, which is pretty good. It's a biblical number. Most celebrities only get one star, so pretty pretty pleased with that. Also, my Uber rating, it's like 4.94, so I think we talked about that when we were in Chicago with our friend HB94, but that's uh, all the places you can find us, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up. There was nothing crazy... Uh, fun about this it was just a very candid very uh raw isn't a great word because I never feel like I'm that raw because I have a certain emotional balance that I try to bring to my everyday life regardless but uh apologies for uh just spending half an hour being really real and having nothing prepared some circumstances beyond my control unfortunately so Hope everyone has a good week. Uh, I went and saw mid-90s Jonah Hill's movie yesterday. It's solid. It's not going to change your life, but it is a, uh, you know, it's worth going to see 
or seeing on Redbox or DVD whenever it comes out. Just 90 minutes, pretty quick little slice of uh, American life. So good stuff. This has been Quinn David Furness. Thank you for listening to my podcast. I hope everyone is having a lovely autumn. I hope no one else gets strep throat or dumped on Halloween all in one week because that's just kind of a, a a tough thing that I wouldn't wish on anybody else. So happy listening. Don't forget to use the hashtag friends of the podcast, not friends of podcast. That's fake news. Hashtag friends of the podcast when you're talking about the Bean Town podcast with your friends and your family. So takeaways, if you are going to break up with somebody, don't do it on Halloween. Don't do it over the phone if you've been dating for three months. And go check out mid-90s Jonah Hill's new movie. So thanks, everyone, for listening. Sorry for being such a bummer. uh, And I hope everyone has a good week.